inside of businesses. This is going to be one of the things that most of your organizations can do right away, or your clients will do right away, depending on where you're coming from. Because it's le le perceived as the least risky. This is something you can do kind of privately. You can use social media inside the company at first. Um, you know, I, I, I remember when I first used to talk about this, we saw even with some early success stories, people say, I don't get, you're telling me to blog, I don't have time for that. Um, you know, we're, I'm trying to run a business here. <coughs> uh, and I just like to say, well, the reason that you're so busy is probably because you're not blogging. Uh, you know, the, the typical <laughs> scenario is if, if you're, you're been in an organization any, number, uh, any amount of time, you're probably a subject matter expert for whatever it is that you were hired for. Uh, and you've accumulated a tremendous amount of knowledge up here but people can't access it unless they call you, email you, or otherwise talk to you. It's inaccessible. However, if you said, hey, uh, 50 times a year I get asked the same set of questions. Here's a link to the five documents that will answer that. Um, uh, th those people can self-service themselves. That's that pattern I was talking about before. And self-service is so important. Uh, and forever after, people can go on, the, on their local uh, portal or intranet and ask, hey, uh, what's, I'm trying to find the answer to this. And then somebody authoritative answers that. And they don't ever have to do that again. Yet they get credit for it. And that's the beauty of the social aspect. The blogs are tied directly to them. It's them. And someone wants another detail that isn't in there, they can then contact that person. Uh, but it's these sorts of scenarios that we're talking about. Enterprise 2.0. Uh, Andrew McAfee of Harvard uh, famously wrote the MIT and Slow Management Review. He said, hey, I'm starting to see this happen. We're seeing this social media cascading across your network into organizations, and they're starting to use it. Some are being very successful in particular. He did two case studies that were very influential. One was a, a German investment bank. Uh, German businesses are very conservative, so this, was, this got a lot of people's attention. Um, and we really define this. This is really important to understand what we're talking about. Emergent, free-form social applications. Blogs would be sure, but it can also be social networking. It could be social messaging like Twitter. We see like Yammer is a great application, Yammer.com, for bringing the Twitter-like ecosystem, you know, but with real business data. You know, you, you don't want to talk, be talking about your clients' private issues in Twitter, but with Yammer, you can get the Twitter experience inside your organization. Now there's many other applications that will do that. But each three of those, those, those words there are the pillars of what we're talking about. They're emergent. Uh, because the, the traditional challenge we've discovered that was wrong with the 1.0 world of doing things around media and communication was that it was too structured. Traditional software is far too structured. It doesn't fit the problem. It makes the problem fit in and required a great deal of work to change our businesses to adapt to it. Whereas these all these social media and 2.0 tools are very emergent, very free-form. You can tackle almost any problem and they'll, they'll allow the right structure and modes of, 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 of communication and collaboration to form. The, right, the, the, the networks to build uh, uh, internally between the, the different entities using them. And they're highly social. One thing I didn't tell you about network effects is that a, a uh, researcher by the name of Reed did, a, did some very ground, influential groundbreaking work in 2003, I think it was, uh, that noted that the network effect of software that was social was, was two orders of magnitude higher than any other type of system. There, there was something fundamentally different. When you plug people into the network. And they're, they're, they're recognizable as such. And you have these social relationships. The software gets much more use. You get much more value out of it. And there's a variety of reasons for why that is. So when we talk about applying this, this 2.0 effect at work, we're talking about globally visible, persistent collaboration. A lot of people come up to me and say, well, we got instant messaging. You know, we got social media. And well, well, that's just one that, that's point to point communication. It's not visible. That all the information that travels across, that's like a phone call. All that information disappears when people hang up and it's back up here instead of on the network. What we're talking about with social media is getting what we know and getting our relationships, so what's going on with the business, onto the network. <coughs> it's globally visible, persistent collaboration. I see a lot of interest, uh, interest here uh, with, uh, right now when I talk to companies. It's not just among, amongst employees. They kind of have tools and kind of been doing this, but they really want to bring Enterprise 2.0 to their business partners and even to selected customers and start working together on things. And that's where, right now, we're leading into the tools are, by the way. But the key message here is Enterprise 2.0 systems adapt to the environment rather than requiring the environment to adapt to it. It, it, it is a singular change, it's a 180 degree change from, from how we used to do a lot of things in software before. It puts workers into the central focus as contributors. 
Uh, yeah, I run into this situation all the time. Uh, one uh, government organization I was talking with, an intelligence agency in DC where, where I'm based out of, uh, with, with the challenge was is they have all these, these intelligence analysts with these great filing cabinets packed with information that could really be of use. I'd be surprised how few computers are out used in parts of government. Um, and so to get access to that information, you have to go and find the right analyst uh, and then talking to the lady you look at their file. Uh, uh, and the challenge was, how do we get this globally visible, persistent, how do we get this data out of their hands and, and make it actionable, get it onto the network and do something exciting with it? And then we know who did what, whose files have what, we can ask them more questions and ask them their opinion. But of course, there's, there's a lot of incentive not to do that. That's the reason for existence. So if all their data is out there, then what use are they? Um, I had uh, uh, last year's Enterprise 2.0 conference in Boston. I had, um, at the, uh, one of the, the head guys at Atlassian. They make the, pretty much the top enterprise wiki product out there. I mean, of course, that's about all they make, which they made more enterprise 2.0 tools. And uh, they said, we've noticed something amazing about people who are using our product, is that those who are officially uh, identified in the organization as being the expert uh, versus those who are actually put sharing their knowledge out there, the ones that are actually sharing their knowledge of the network become the de facto experts, the go-to people. Uh, versus the, the folks that have the official label. I'm the expert on so-and-so, but if they're not using these channels, they soon just get routed right around. The network routes around people who don't participate. That's actually what happens. You become the, the, the knowledge resource. People want your opinion. You become the influencer. It's very interesting how, how the Web 2.0 effect works. So what are the benefits we're talking about? Probably many of you are familiar with them. We have increased knowledge retention. Uh, we have one, uh, one financial services firm. They didn't want to use it these tools in an important part of the business, so they moved them to the call center. Right? And, and you'd probably say, well, I, well, they're not gonna get a lot of value out of that. Uh, but they discovered that, well, these younger workers who are hired just for tax season, every year, every tax, financial services firms around the world hire all these workers for tax season, they answer all these questions, people get this, these ghastly forms, at a, a, you know, help them file their tax returns about their investments, they have no idea what to do, and they call on the phone. What does this mean? What are the tax implications? And consistently answering the question is really, really important. But most of the information isn't in the official way. You know, if you ask question A, answer the following. You know, question B, answer the following. A lot of those aren't there yet. You'll find someone who knows that more about that particular situation and ask that. Uh, if you can imagine how long it takes to answer a lot of those calls. But what happened was is the network began to learn. Uh, when someone, instead of taking, I, I, we saw, I, I actually first saw one person had a 500 page Word document. That was the only thing they could have to find and search something. It would enter everything that they had learned and uh, they can then find it later on. Of course, they benefited no one else in the organization. So they used wikis instead, they actually used Atlassian, and they opened it all up, and everyone could add notes to the bottom of any policy or procedure or whatever it is they wanted, and it was search, you could find things. It was amazing what happened, uh, that they actually, they, they actually started seeing productivity gains. People could find the information, answer the caller's question quickly, and you guessed it. Call times went down, customer service satisfaction went up. They were on hold while they tried to get together a whole bunch, find the experts who had the answer to your question. You didn't have to do that. The information was on the network. So increased knowledge retention. And I can go in, into that level of detail with all of these, uh, but you get the idea. Um, and the, I like the less duplication of work is another really important one. I see this pattern now. Now that we're seeing these tools talk to, to penetrate organizations pretty consistently, I see a lot of organizations saying, you, you guys are collecting that data over there? We're doing the same thing. Or, or your work, you do that as a business process? We're doing that too. Uh, because they can actually <coughs> see what's happening in the organization. And they can say, well, we combine efforts and reduce costs and all of that. Those are the types of scenarios that happen all the time when we see people starting to do these things. Um, why is it different? I, mean, I, I, I still debate whether to leave this particular um, question in here. Um, but it, the, um, you know, it, it, it's the first was like, well, all right, you're telling us we already have tons and tons of software run our, run our business now. Now we need new stuff. Uh, and I think it's beginning, it's becoming increasingly clear to most people that this is this is quantitatively, uh, or excuse me, qualitatively different uh, in terms of um, whether you have extensive training. You know, if you're on the, if you're on the network and you make anyone read a manual or go to training for anything, you're out of business. There are a thousand companies <coughs> behind you. Have people with tools don't have to think about using it; it just works. Um, complexity, experts to make changes, uh, predetermined uses. So this is one of the very interesting is, is these multiple outcomes. We often use five solutions to solve a particular problem in our organization. What we see in these very emergent reform tools is 
we might get a single initial use out of that data, out of that collaboration point. But then that information lives on and gets reused.